It started as a routine call for the Margate, Florida Fire Department. Initially, the call came in as uh, someone fell at an address, which is a nursing home. So we didn't think too much of it. But as paramedic Louis Villar raced to the Beverly Manor Nursing Home, he soon realized this was no ordinary emergency. Um, construction worker just fell into a hole. Do you know what's wrong with him? No, I don't. I just see all the construction workers screaming, help, help. A few minutes later, a call came in explaining what the person falling was. Rescue 118, we have two people, actually three people trapped. They all have airways at this time. For two days, workers had been digging a trench on the nursing home property to install a new sewer line. Federal regulations require construction sites like this be reinforced to ensure the walls don't give way. That wasn't done here, so the ground was very unstable, and the 10-foot deep trench collapsed. When you got there, what were you thinking? Oh my God, I thought we were going to have three deceased people in that, in that trench. What they found in that trench was unlike anything the paramedics had ever encountered. A huge boulder the size of a small pickup truck, which was embedded on one side of the trench, had come loose. As it rolled across the trench, three men tried to run from it, but one man was killed instantly, and two others were buried alive by the rubble and the rock weighing almost 2,000 pounds. Construction worker Floyd Bogan never saw it coming. Yeah, it just came like that. That was it. As soon as I heard somebody say, watch out, and I, I like stepped forward, and that was it. Bogan and his co-workers' legs were pinned. They couldn't move, and they could hardly breathe with the weight of the fallen dirt on top of them. I could feel the dirt, you know, coming down into my hand, and it was just collecting up around my face, and it was like, uh, oh, God, somebody please get me out of here before I suffocate. Four of us actually jumped in the hole and started freeing up their chest and torso so they could breathe. But jumping in was risky because the trench could collapse again at any moment, killing the workers and the rescuers. Any attempt to get the men out had to wait until the trench was shored up with plywood. Precious time was being lost. The job was too big for the small Margate department to handle alone. So the call went out to this elite team of rescue specialists. I came down and uh, I could tell by the concerned look on their faces that this was not just to dig the body out and pull them up. My first thing was to prioritize the patients. Is that a hard decision to make? It's a very hard decision. You're telling basically somebody that we're not going to do anything for you for a little while while we're getting your buddy out right next to you. So the team concentrated first on Floyd Bogan. He's the more exposed worker seen here on the left. Bogan, whose face and skull were fractured, was in better shape than the other trap worker, Cleo Brizuela. But Bogan also had something devastating to deal with. The boulder had pinned him right on top of his dead co-worker. He had a look of fear on his face, you know. I mean, he looked scared. That image of his dead friend's face is etched permanently in Floyd Bogan's mind. His eyes were wide open. He was walking straight up, you know. I just couldn't take it. I, I had to walk away. He was crying, and uh, we told him, just stay with us. We'll get you out. Don't worry about him. We just need to get you out. The rescuers first tried to lift the rock off Bogan by using an airbag, which was inflated under his side of the rock. It didn't work. The bag just sank in the mud at the bottom of the trench. Next, they put a hydraulic jack under the other side of the rock. Still, the ground was too soft to support the pressure. The boulder wasn't budging. Everything you pushed off of gave way, and the trench had water in it. Water. It was one more problem. The trench would fill up with groundwater unless it was pumped out. This is how high it rose on another day. For rescuers, it was like a nightmare from a Hollywood movie, like this scene from the film, Sometimes a Great Notion. I don't like this water. It's getting over my chin. Suppose they couldn't get the men out as the water rose. It's shifted, Hank. <laughs> Rescuers were relying on one pump they feared could fail at any time, submerging the men. If they didn't have that pump, mm -hmm. you could have drowned. Yes. The only thing I thought about was getting out of this hole. It's like, like my own grave. As dusk was setting in, the more than 50 emergency workers on top had to constantly shore up the trench. 
as the groundwater continuously eroded the walls. At the same time, rescuers in the trench were running out of options. They would try one thing and it wouldn't work. They'd try mm -hmm. another thing, it didn't work. Yes, I was thinking, it's gonna take forever to get out of here. I was trying to help them. I told them, get you a chisel or something, you know, get you a jackhammer. A jackhammer was too dangerous. So the rescuers turned to an air chisel, a smaller tool, which uses compressed air to drive the chisel into thick, dense rock. How much of the boulder would you chip away with that tool? Just a little bit at a time, just a handful at a time. Just inches at a time? Inches. Just trying to move enough to breed, to try and get his leg uh, freed. In the two hours since the accident, they'd been able to chip away only a bucket-sized portion of the boulder. They had no idea how much more it would take to free the men. The chiseling required the precision of a surgeon. Bogan's foot was submerged in water and trapped between the rock and a sewer pipe. And there was something else, the dead man's legs. They were intertwined with Bogan's. He was kind of wrapped around me. One leg was, you know, it was up and over and I could feel his foot, you know, coming down around my shin on the other side. One slip and it could have been somebody's leg or take a big chunk of the boulder off and then more would have crushed him. It must have been hell down in that trench. Well, sure, you've got a, a deceased co-worker right there looking at you, you're upside down, working underwater, uh, under time constraints and just hoping that you're, you're successful. You thought they would die? Yes, I did. And that was the thought of the other trapped man, whose hard hat is barely visible. He didn't think he was going to make it. But paramedic Louis Villar was using IVs and oxygen to keep Cleo Brizuela alive. What did he say to you? In Spanish, he told me that he, he, he couldn't keep this up any longer, that he just he won't want to, to pass out, he wanted, wanted to go. And how do you deal with someone who wants to give up? Just with us shaking him and, and yelling at him, he would uh, respond. It was really a nasty situation to have him in that because there's not much more we could do for him except free him. And the rescuers were constantly encouraging Floyd Bogan to keep on fighting too. We were all talking to him, hang in there, we promised this guy we were going to get him out. But it was taking far longer than they ever imagined. It was dark, there was a threat of hypothermia from the cold water in the trench and rescuers kept fearing there might be only one last terrible option, amputation. Surgeons were standing by. I said, cut it off if you have to. I have to get out of this ditch. I ain't gonna die in here. I mean, I've, I've gotten this far. But then, after three painstaking hours, a breakthrough. Bit by bit, the enormous boulder was being chiseled away into tiny stones. A stubborn piece fell off, and Floyd Bogan's leg was coming free. I can feel my leg moving, and I know it's just going to come out of there any time. It's just an adrenaline rush. You know, you're, you're trying desperately to save somebody's life, and you're, it, it's working. Finally, the first man was out. They raised Bogan up in the darkness and pushed him up to the hands waiting above. They're bringing you up here, Floyd. What do you remember about this? One fellow came up and shook my hand, and he says, it's nice to see you again. Floyd Bogan was out of the trench, but not out of trouble. He was washed down to better assess his injuries and rushed to the emergency trauma center. What was that like when you got the first victim out? We were pretty happy about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty happy. What's next? Yeah. You know, what's well, next? We're halfway there, basically, was the deal. And getting all the way there wasn't going to be easy. Cleo Brizuela, still pinned under the other side of the rock, was fading fast. He was losing blood because of severe internal injuries and desperately needed a transfusion. We actually had to bring a hospital out to the hole. Is it very unusual for you to give someone blood in a situation like it's that? It's pretty much unheard of. It's, it's not done. The transfusion bought critical time. Again, rescuers turned the air chisel on the underside of the rock, breaking off more tiny pieces and using shovels, even their bare hands, to scoop out the mud and dirt around the man. Forty minutes later, Brizuela was handed up in a stretcher to waiting paramedics. When I got him inside the rescue truck, I spoke to him and I, and I told him, yeah, you're born again. Brizuela was taken to the same trauma center as his co-worker Floyd Bogan. Both men, though, were still fighting for their lives, suffering from multiple fractures and internal injuries. They would undergo hours of surgery. I got plates from here 
down to here, right in here. I get 70 screws holding my face back together. So this isn't a bone, this is a, this is a plate? Yes. There will be more surgery, but three months after looking death in the face, trapped deep in a trench, Floyd Bogan and his co-worker are back on solid ground. Were these guys lucky? Very lucky, sir. So. The odds were against them and, and they made it. The construction company in this case, Richard Fowler Incorporated, claims that the trench was built in accordance with federal law. Both state and federal officials are investigating and are considering possible criminal charges.